Buongiorno everyone! So today we're gonna talk about best books of 2023. 23 is done and I'm so happy about it. It was not a good year. Nothing is black or white. It had a positive aspect, but it was so many negative aspects and I'm so happy it's 2024 and we can change our lives and just start fresh. So let's talk about best books of the last year. <laughs> First we have books of the January. First book is The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon. Do I have this book here because I don't have... Oh yes! The Enchanted Sonata and this book was truly amazing. I was in my magical nutcracker era and this book is a nutcracker retelling and it was beautiful, it was magical, it completely bewitched me and it's about Clara and about her journey, her journey to this magical world and then there is a love story and then there is a fight that there is evil and all the good things that comes with the nutcracker, an enchantment empire of beautiful palaces fickle fairies and almost rats and a prince, Clara must face a magician who uses music as magic and the future she thought she wanted. It's very beautiful because you know it's about love, about friendship, about dreams, about things that you want and things that you think you want. I found it very amazing and beautiful and magical. It's, it's a beautiful fairy tale. Honestly, it was such a good book. It was such a good book. <laughs> oh, by the way, these books are not ranked. I'm just going from January to December. I don't have any favorites from February, so let's go next. Oh, then we have... Where do I have this book? Oh, here. You guys, this, this, this was beautiful. Okay, my second favorite book of the year, Clara and the Sun by Ishiguro. <sighs> Kazuo Ishiguro is one of the greatest writers ever and I'm so inspired by his writing, by the way he thinks about humans and about soul. This is beautiful, beautiful book about artificial intelligent robot slash doll and well, it is about Clara. This is our main character and she is the artificial intelligent friend that it is supposed to be used as as a help you know she 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 just stays in the shop hoping that she will be chosen as a helper for the next customer and when she does she becomes part of the family and it's so interesting to see how she thinks as a you could say a robot but i don't want i do not want to call her this way in clara and the sun kazushi girl looks at our rapidly changing modern world through the eyes of an unforgettable narrator to explore a fundamental question what does it mean to love it was such a beautiful and important read because you know as i just read it focused on topics of what is love, what, it, what does it mean to be a human being, and what is a soul. Soul. Soul in his books is such an interesting aspect. I read some of his other works too, but this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Please read it. Please read it. Oh, in May. I have two books from May. Where do I have it? Okay, so first... Uh, we have Cybel's Secret and you guys, I'm not like Juliet Marillier is... I'm not sure if I'm saying the surname correctly. She's one of my favorite authors. She... her work are fantasy works inspired by myths, folklore, fairy tales and I absolutely adore them. They let me explore this beautiful and magical world of unknown and they let me escape the reality and also dive in into the magic and fairy tales itself. I'm so inspired by fairy tales. My thesis was about actually world building and, and you know the importance of myth and legends on literature and every time when I read such a 
good piece of a uh, of work. I just feel so inspired, and I did like her uh, other like Wildwood Dancing is still my favorite book ever, but this one was great too. It explored a, a different aspect of fairy tales because it was more it was not very uh, spooky driven. It was not it didn't have that magical fairy tale vibe. The setting is way different. It's not a typical fairy tale one. Uh, but it was great. I read it well in summer, so I could just felt the hotness, like you know, all of the explanations and descriptions of the bathhouses and the markets and the colors. And now I want to go to Istanbul, <laughs> and I would love to live in a fairy tale. It was beautiful. Every time when I read her work, I'm just inspired. And yeah, for you guys. We have the power of positive thinking. This was my reread. This was my reread, and what can you say? It's one of the greatest pieces of literature about positive thinking you can ever read. It it's like a bible of how to work with your mind. It's so good. It's one of the first books that has been that has covered this topic so broadly but so simply at the same time and as you can see, there's some things to work on. <laughs> it's amazing. It's I am definitely going to read that this year because read so quickly doesn't leave you with like an answered questions. It's very simple, so it's good for just you know psychology students, but also for you if you want to heal yourself. I think it's a very good book and that's why I read that and that's why I'm going to read that too. Because the important thing is to keep on reminding yourself about that things because all the things here you probably know but you don't remember about them and that is why we find ourselves so often in this loop of sadness and let's just read those books you know let's read them let's reread them because in the end they all talk about the same thing you know how to be happy happiness positive thinking law of attraction god universe it is all the same thing but it's important to write those books keep on writing them it's still the same thing but every other thing works differently for other people so let's just read those things let's read let's write let's just spread the positivity and if you want to start with personal development this book is great so recommendation for me cool next one number fifth you guys we have emily wiles encyclopedia of fairies this book was a phenomenon on the internet everywhere it was huge it was huge on tiktok youtube everywhere and for a reason this book was amazing it was really good not only plot wise which was very whimsical and easy the plot was so simple but language of it was absolutely captivating the, the facts not the facts but uh, the knowledge and the information that were put in this book are absolutely amazing um the the research for this book must have taken a long time because the creation of this world was just beautiful to me. You probably know what it is about. It's about Emily Wilde and she goes to this village to do her research about fairies because she's a scholar and her goal is to finish her work, her like life work, which is encyclopedia of fairies. So she studies them, she explores their world, tries to understand how they live and communicate. And I love this book. We have very sweet uh, love story here. It is very gentle and also a little friendship driven, friend driven. I just find it extremely beautiful and it was gentle. It could be also a little spooky, which I loved. And... I absolutely adore that. Oh my god. Do I have this book here? Do I have it? This is actually so interesting, you guys, because like monthly, it was put in a good order when it comes to my favorites. Okay, um, like almost. Let's categorize it, okay? Uh, actually, I'm gonna say my... Let's say number, number seven from these. I... 
Okay, I'm gonna say actually uh, it should grow. I loved it so much. I loved it so much, but just because of my fairy tale and folklore academics um, interests, I have to put it at number seven, but it was so good. It was really so good. It doesn't mean nothing that it's on the seventh place because it's still the seventh book of, you know, the year but we have this one number six i think i'm gonna put i i don't know it's hard okay i think i'm gonna put um enchanted sonata it was amazing but uh there's no but it was amazing it's number six we have number five so i'm gonna say uh cybel's secret four we gonna s yes six seven five four how many books did i read Well, whatever. So then we have Emily Wilde's amazing, amazing. And then we have on number three, we have our positive thinking. I could not put it in the other way. It's, we it was amazing, amazing, amazing. The power of mind is amazing. Number three. Number two, which is also a book of September. September, fascinating womanhood. I read that book when I really needed to explore my inner woman, my inner femininity, my inner goddess. And this book not only helped me a lot, but also showed me a way I can improve on being myself, but keep on growing. Because there is a part, there is a time in girls' lives when they have to do certain changes. We go through changes all the time. We go through puberty, our body changes, our mind changes a lot. And finding yourself as a woman sometimes can be tough. You want to grow up, but you don't want to lose yourself. And there, there are many things going on in your head, honestly. And sometimes it's tough what's true, what's not. This book explores the idea of femininity, particularly by your, with your man. It sort of explores the idea of how to explore your femininity while being in a good relationship or better relationship and how to make this relationship good because of your femininity. So I found this book very important, not only for women, but also for relationship they create with their husbands, uh, partners. I I thought it was extremely beautiful and it's not for everyone because um, it, it's a pretty old book and it has some old thinking um, because it was written a long time ago so the idea of the woman back then was different so please remember about that when you read this book because sometimes when I was reading it I was like Ooh, that's a bit old school then again I was like it's fine because it was back then and I can still imply the knowledge here at the today's world and I found it really 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 good I love the idea of you know femininity and masculine energy and both of those two energies they need each other for me finding your inner woman inner goddess it's so important and so essential and I think it doesn't have to be important for everyone but this is sort of a beautiful balance that one energy needs the other one to survive and as a woman i do need this masculine energy and it was so beautiful to find here the feminine energy that i wanted to have for myself this version is actually a written version of the book by the original author's daughter because the original book is like so old school and so old that it would not be good i think for women in today today's world but i don't know because i didn't read the original one but this one is like still the same book with a little corrections by the original author's daughter uh, i hope you understood but the, the original book was basically helen Andelins, and she wrote the original one but this was edited by the dixie uh, Adeline. She is the oldest daughter of the original author, but this is like the same book, a little edited by the daughter, so it will work better for modern women. So very beautiful, it helped me a lot to work with my inner femininity and I think every woman should read that, but still remember about, you know, being modern in the society because we keep on growing and it's not good to stick to old truths. But it was beautiful. Number two. Number one, you guys. Number one. You can heal your life by Louis Hay. Louis Hay. This woman 
I am in love. I want to be this woman. I love the way she works with love and again, femininity and the idea of being yourself and being guided with love and kindness because love is answer for everything. Honestly, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this and I want you to understand that so bad. If you are having some issues, need you to know that everything starts with love. If you if you will work on the love within you, it's gonna be the best start. It can be the best start for you. Work with love towards yourself and toward the world. Work with the kindness and gratefulness. It can give you so, so much. But again, coming back to Louise Hay, she is an author, she explores this idea of mental health and being happy and being in love with life and yourself and she also focuses a lot on healing, how you can heal your life through love and how uh, some negative aspects can affect your physical state, so disorders, sicknesses, Everything you can find that in the book. Whoops. You can find that here in a Heal Your Body little book. Here, basically, she explores all all the sicknesses right here and why why was it caused. So, for example, we have uh, I don't know dizziness, right? So we have lightly scattered thinking, a refusal to look. So this is why we have dizziness. And then she says little mantras that you can say to sort of let go of that idea because um, she focuses on, on how important your mindset is and how it can influence your body state, your physical state. And um, in, in that little book, she just gives you examples of mantras and affirmations you can tell yourself to let go of the negative truth that you have because negative truths can destroy your life and you can watch my other video about that how you can change your life for 2024 because I talk there about how your lies affect your life but basically uh, she explores that idea of love and of, of how important your mind is and I found it beautiful and this book was just full of love and full of kindness and I think we should read all of us should read that books because in the end we just want a happy life and to do that we need to live with love towards ourselves and towards other human beings and just treat yourself with love and treat others with love that's all i need from you because then you're gonna be happy you're gonna you know be sad sometimes but that's how life works but in the end i just it would be ugh, you can hear real life that's what i mean so that's number one and these are all the seven books my seven favorite books of 2024 these are the three the three favorite ones it's all about like personal development as you can see this is sort of my thing right now <laughs> and thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here in wonderland thank you so much thank you and see you next time bye